There's Just Something About Kansas City is brought to you in part by the generosity of our friends at the Cockrell Family Foundation and the Sherman Family Foundation. Thank you. Welcome to another episode of There's Just Something About Kansas City. We talk to people about the people, places, and things that make this such a great place to live. And this young lady across from me, Claudia Meyer, Christo Ray, the first Latina president of Christo Ray High School. And we are so happy to have you in here. Your story is absolutely incredible. What you have had to overcome as a young girl to get to where you are today has just been phenomenal. Thanks so much for taking some time, especially during the school year and Hispanic Heritage Month. This is a a big time for you. Well, thank you. The pleasure is all mine. I feel honored to be here and to be able to share my story and, and share a little bit about this wonderful city. So thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's great. And, and your story is incredible. As we said, you uh, came from Brazil. I did. When you were a 15-year-old girl, you didn't know the language, the culture. You probably didn't even know, why am I here and why did we leave Brazil? Give us a little bit of the backstory about, and I know you remember a lot about Brazil, and you probably still have family there. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and just tell us about growing up in Brazil, being there, and then what was the catalyst that, that made you and your family move here to Kansas City? Absolutely. Love to talk about that. You know, my journey to Kansas City wasn't a direct one. So um, my when I was probably around 11, 12, my dad um, approached us. He was a university professor there. and uh, But, you know, to have that university professor title in in our country it's not the same thing as having it here my dad was a very hard working man he still had to work two or three jobs on top of that Mm -hmm. and he always wanted a better opportunity for his kids you know i'm the oldest of four and when i was 11 i remember him approaching the family and, and and discussing with us um there's an opportunity for me to get a scholarship to work on his phd in electrical engineering in the United States. And at 11, you're like, oh, okay, that sounds great. And, you know, like the whole family is going to go. Let's go to Disney World. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> this is fun. And um, it wasn't until I was 14 when he was uh, given the scholarship and approached the family again and said, uh, I've received the scholarship, so we will be moving to the United States. It's a four-year program. And uh, we left the day of my 15th birthday. Oh, wow. And, you know, uh, as a 14, 15-year-old, you already have your set of friends. And mm. in Brazil, we had a very um, very close family and a, a very big family in which we got together all the time. And and so it was a difficult transition to come to the United States. Um, where, where were you from in Brazil? Belém. Belém, the northern part of Brazil. My okay. dad's from Rio. My mom's from Macapá, but I was born in Belém. So we visited Rio and in, in, in Macapá all the time. But it you know, Belang is where I was born, which is a huge metropolitan city mm-hmm. as well. But, uh, you know, the adjustment came. Um, so traveling with the entire family, not knowing the language, uh, not being not being exposed to the type of educational system that the United mm-hmm. States had. You know, I grew up, I went to a faith-based school growing up, and then coming here, I went to public school. My parents couldn't afford private school for yeah. me. And uh, so just going through those um, challenges in, in, in that in barriers that were in front of me, but also um, I, I was very blessed to, to have some amazing people who gave me support and, and turned those challenges into opportunities. And, you know, if one thing my parents always said is seize every opportunity, right? Take advantage of everything. And that's one of the things that... Um, that that's been instilled in me since 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 a kid, since being a little right. girl. So um, when we arrived in the United States, everything was different. You know, uh, we arrived in Rolla, Missouri. His um, PhD was actually through the University of Missouri Rolla. It was called Rolla back then, Missouri. Right, Rolla. and they're now known for their engineering. And now mm-hmm. it's Missouri S and T. So it's been a quite a few right. uh, many years ago, but it was. Um, an experience that I would not trade it for the world. You know, I've learned so much and, and grown so much through it. And uh, from arriving my first day to kind of going, you know, in, in Brazil, the educational system, you go either in the morning from 8 to noon or you go from 12 to 4. And that's in, and you're mainly focusing on your core classes, which is your Portuguese, your Spanish, your uh, science, your math, and, and everything else is considered um, 
Extracurricular. Extracurricular. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's a choice if you want to take it or not. It's right. available, but it's a choice. And so everybody goes home at noon, has lunch with their family, take their CS, and then start the afternoon however they want to. So coming here, I didn't know that we were going to be in school from um, 7.30 to 4 o'clock. <laughs> you know? So going, it was a whole what? shift. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> going, it's noon. Why is nobody here to pick me up? But I can't ask those questions because I don't know how to speak the language. So um, it wasn't... Uh, it, everything was an adjustment from from the language to the right. weather to the culture to everything. It was just something that I had to get used to and and just learn from. Yeah, and yeah. you had you did not know how to speak English at all, correct? Not one word. Not I knew how to word. say no. <laughs> I knew how to say no. I, I and that was the typical word that fifteen I, year old at <laughs> yeah. that time. Okay, yes, no. Yes, <laughs> but but you know it back then there were no. Um, Yes, cell programs because nobody really uh, had the experience of dealing with immigrant children coming to you know it wasn't out of like we don't want to support this child but how do we how do we um, make sure that uh, she has the service that she needs so it was trying everybody trying to piece things together they hired me um, a you know I remember her name was Ursula she was um, a probably ninety year old at the time uh, wow. German uh, American. And she came in and read books with me. And uh, she is somebody that I became very close to because, you know, and I would learn English with her German accent, you know, like. (laughs) (laughs) So not only are you from Brazil, but now you're learning English and now speaking German at the same time. But, you know, this is, it goes to show you the, the, the lens that they were going to try to provide support that that nobody knew how to support me. And so I think that those were the things that um, now as an educator really uh, molded me what I want schools to look like and how do we support kids? How do we meet kids where they are? You know, I right. remember in Brazil, I was taking calculus and chemistry as a, as a freshman. And coming here, I was put into the lowest level math and lowest level science. And I remember going, this is really easy. But yeah. I didn't know that, that was, there was not an option of upper level classes at the time. I remember discussing it with my parents and saying, they're adding and multiplying and, and you know, in stuff I did in first grade, right? But yeah. but but you know, they didn't give me a test because they didn't know how to test me for it. So it took him like four weeks to see, like, okay, Claudia is a little bit more advanced. She's actually now helping kids in the class. Mm-hmm. So we need to start busing her from the freshman center to the high school for the more advanced classes. So it took a little time, but but those are the things that I look back now as an educator, and I'm like, every kids that walk through our building, as from a you know, I've served from a teacher to uh, now a president yeah, of a school. Yeah, you've done everything. So mm-hmm. I, that's one of the things that always sticks with me. Let's let's figure out where this kid is. Let's make sure that we are offering the best plan possible. Okay, so you came up with your siblings yes. at the time, right? Mom and dad and the siblings, everybody's in Rolla yes. at that point. Did you experience any, I don't, you know, kickback or bullying and nobody knew who you were or try to make fun of you or any, any of those? Did you experience much of that at, in Rolla? Sure, sure. There were some of that, but I didn't understand any of it. So. <laughs> you had no idea but, what they were talking about. But no, you you can also, you can tell, I think that's, you know, um, it, it wasn't a, a huge part of my experience, but there were some of that. There were some comments that you kind of feel awkward, but then also you see all the other people that are looking for you to Become friends Excel. and to mm-hmm. to have relationships and to the, the, there's to support you. So I didn't. I I yeah. There, that's always present. Sometimes you wish there wasn't, but it's the world we live in. But I think also that part was really um, overshadowed by the greatness uh, in the reception that I received. Yeah. You know, and then you start playing sports and you start becoming part of the community and, and growing into that. So. Yeah. You played sports then I, I as played well? volleyball, yes. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you don't know it, okay, <laughs> Claudia is six feet in her stocking, uh, in, in her stocking feet. And it's, uh, you, uh, yeah, so you probably played volleyball or basketball, I'm assuming. I did not play basketball, but I did play volleyball. I, I yeah, Which no. is Brazil. I mean, <laughs> that, all we think about is exa- Rio exactly, and the beach. And exactly. We, we exactly. watch the Brazilian um, yes. volleyball team in the Olympics, of Absolutely. course. Absolutely. It's, it's, yeah. it's huge there. So it's yeah. naturally something I picked up. So, yeah. yes. yes. Well, well, good. So, so yeah. you participate. And so that does help you assimilate. Sports is the great melting pot for people to be able to, you know, put aside all the differences of who we are, and all of a sudden now you're a team, and you've got to play together and be together. Yeah, yeah that unity component, yeah. it's, it's just huge, right? It's huge, yeah. huge. And lessons that you learn throughout of it as well. Yeah, so. Absolutely. So uh, in the siblings then, you are the oldest? I'm the oldest, oldest of four, of four. And yes. So what, what about the other siblings? So, yes, everybody, um, 
came through the same way. My brother was in kindergarten when we came, and he's the baby. So there's, you know, there's three girls, two, three girls and one boy. And um, they are also here in Kansas City. Oh, um, you know, this opportunity not only um, provided my dad with a PhD, but also when um, his four years were over, um, I happened to be dating an American and happened to be in love. And uh, we dated for two years in high school and got married right out of high school. And it was not, uh, that was about the time my parents were thinking about going back to, United, to, to Brazil because mm-hmm. they had to go back. So I had, I threw a wrench in the whole plan. Um, <laughs> and it was only because, you know, I remember talking to my parents and saying that they had saved some money and they knew the plan was to leave me here to go to college. And But the eventual plan was for you someday to come back to Brazil? Correct. Okay. Correct. And so... I approached them and I said, you know, uh, Tony and I would like to room together in college. And uh, there was an opportunity for all of us friends to get a house. And apparently that was, you know, from a very open relationship I had with my parents, that was not one thing that it was okay to come up and talk. (laughs) And so um, they were like, that is not happening. You know, we're going to have to shift some things. That is not okay. And I'm like, okay, well, let me, problem solver that I am, I'm like, let me go back to the drawing board and, and, and. First of all, let me call Tony and tell him not to come over to the house because, you know, yeah. his life could You'll be, be a risk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and here's my proposal, by the way. Over the phone, he says, um, you know, we know we want to get married after college, so why don't we get married before? And that way your parents feel okay with it and we respect it. And he came up with this plan. He's like, we can just get married to the justice of peace. And you're telling a Catholic mom that, right? Yeah, right. Okay. So, and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. Let me go take it back on my notes and take it back to my parents and have this conversation. And I pitched, and they were like, absolutely not. This is insane. Look good uh, on paper. Yeah, you, you can go ahead and, and room together. My dad's like, I don't want to force you into marriage. This is not what I intended to do. But I'm like, you know what? We've already made our plans. And my mom's like, you're not getting married. To make a long story short, um, she had six months to put a wedding together. I got married at the church. Everything was great. But um, I graduated high school in May of 91. We got married in June 91, and we started college. We were both accepted at UMR. Uh, so we started college in August. And there is there it is. Gosh. My parents, uh, my dad's freaking out at this point. He's like, <laughs> you know, um, I cannot leave my daughter in the United States by herself. So, he, But in order for him to stay... He would have to find a company that would sponsor his visa, and he found one in Kansas City. Oh so and this, the company was yes, do you the, remember company the company was Progress Electric, okay. and this town has given my dad the opportunity to have the American dream. A few years later, while working there, he had the opportunity to buy the firm. Oh my! And gosh. now turned into something much bigger. It's one of the the biggest minority engineering companies in um, Kansas City. And my brother is now the CEO. My sister is the CFO. So, you know, this town allowed for so much. So there was just something about Kansas City yeah, that, yeah, right. you know, that provided the American dream for my parents and my family. And uh, when they moved here, they moved. Uh, Education has always been a huge component in my, my mm-hmm. parents' upbringing for us. And he had found out that the Blue Springs School District was a great school district. So that's where they moved and um, put their roots down there. And... You know, that's that my brothers and sisters went to Blue Springs uh, South and grew up in Kansas City and then this this KC metro area. Wow. So, yeah. So, so in the, the bottom line here, the early marriage ended up being great for the it entire family. Is that what we're trying to talk about here? Yes. So we, do you ever go back to him and say, hey, we told you it was going to be a good idea. All the time. I'm like, Dad, you know I'm always right. He's looking at me like, oh, gosh. You know, four, three girls, you know, he doesn't even argue anymore. Yeah. Oh, no, huh? no, no. You, and, yeah, uh, and yeah, you're not going to win any of those arguments. So you moved to Blue Springs. You went to high school there, So correct? I did not. So Tony oh, that's and I, right. you Tony were and I at that point were in Rolla. Rolla. Yeah, right. And so we did uh, our freshman year in Rolla college in sophomore year and then I got pregnant with our first one. Oh wow. So then my parents were already in Blue Springs and um, I remember calling my mom and she's also a problem solver and I'm like mom I don't know how I'm going to finish college now uh, we've been married for two years I said you know I, I don't know and she's like okay I've got a plan. There is a university not too far from Blue Springs it's called University of Central Missouri now it's UCM. UCM. Um, right. Yes and so we transfer there finished there and Got jobs in the Blue Springs School District right out of right out of wow. college. My husband and I both, and and he's still at the same school twenty eight years later. 
And I had, you know, I served in every capacity from a teacher to an instructional coach, a school counselor uh, in administration. And so here I am. Yeah, right. Yeah. That is just yeah. yeah, phenomenal. So, And you really did start the bottom. You started yes. as a teacher yes. and you yes. worked your way through it all so that when you go back and you interact with a teacher, you know exactly what they're going through. It keeps me okay? grounded. It keeps the, me grounded. The, yeah. the entry-level administrators, you know exactly what they're going Absolutely. through. And then all the way up to principal. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, just, just yeah. Gives you a better understanding of the whole process yeah. and how to be how to better how to be a better leader and be able to support. Yeah. So, yeah. so you're not working with the, your company with your dad's company, but uh, everybody else in the family is that. Uh, everybody else in the family is. That yes. is just yes. phenomenal. Yes. That that is such a great yes. story of yes. you know overcoming tremendous obstacles. I mean, you're just sitting here and you're you're smiling and you're talking and the stories we love it. But I'm just trying to think of. Okay, I picked myself up at 15 from Pittsburgh, and I moved to Rio. Okay, well, I would, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to come out the other end like you came out the other end no, here. I mean, no. it's just ju you. just phenomenal. I appreciate you recognizing that. There's a lot of grit. There's a lot of resilience that goes into it. You know, lessons learned and, and making sure that, you know, you don't dwell on the, you learn from the the, the experiences that challenge you and that uh, I think that there is something to be said about that. Uh, but also learning from that instead of being stuck on it and right. moving forward and saying how can I how can I use my platform to make this place a better a better world? Yeah, so, and yeah. and I think you know they can look at you as an example of look what she had to overcome. And I know you don't dwell on I'm sure with them, but all they would have to do is look back in your history and say you know she is walking the talk. I mean she is I she's hope so. she's <laughs> been through it all. You know, and this is this is what can happen to you if. You put your, you know, your, your nose at the grindstone and yeah, just absolutely. stay after it. And, yeah. and not afraid of making mistakes, not afraid of taking chances because, right. you know, that just hinders you and holds you back. And I think that uh, it's one of the things about the opportunities that I've had is it's really taking chances and being em embracing what comes at me and trying to make the best decisions I can possibly make. Right. So before you leave Blue Springs... And before Christo Ray, I'm sure it comes knocking on a door, or you went knocking on a door. I'm not exactly sure which way that went before you became the first female Latina president of Christo Ray, which is phenomenal. What what was your thinking as you're as you're moving up the ladder, Blue Springs? You probably always wanted to be a principal and head up a school, correct? Absolutely. And yeah. I've had, you know, in Blue Springs, I've had some amazing mentors and amazing superintendents and supervisors that I still keep in touch, touch with this this day. But they kind of um, encouraged me. They said, you know, okay, so you're a teacher. I think you should go back to school and get your master's in school counseling. I'm like, so, okay, so here I go. I go back and get a master's. I think you should get, you know, your administration degree. So here I go. I get, and then working on my doctorate, um, you know, I, I just really wanted to, to be able to, take what I've learned and, and help out other districts, help mm -hmm. out other schools. I had the opportunity to visit a charter school while I was an administrator in Blue Springs. Um, and it was just a visit. And I, you know, <laughs> coming out uh, of college and going straight to Blue Springs and having my career there, um, I didn't know about different uh, urban schools. Mm -hmm. And this is um, the opportunity that I took to, to let, me, let me go and, and check it out. And I walked into a school that worked of kids who look just like me and mm -hmm. I you know my heart just went to them and, and I I remember one of them asking me on my way out they said what are you doing here I said oh I'm a, a principal at a different district but I am just here to observe your school and she said you're a principal I didn't know we could be principals so that really stuck with me yes in regards to <laughs> let me I need to do something to encourage and to to be able to to be an example for other other ladies out there that that ladies want of to, color, ladies yeah, of color, a hundred percent that want to be in leadership positions someday, and so yeah, yeah, and, and just not Hispanic or Latina, no, just ladies of color, uh, yes, yeah, and ladies, ladies, period, but yes. of colors is what my focus was on, yes, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Okay, so who approached who? Did Krista Ray come to you, and how did they get your name, and how did they so, find out about yes, you? Yes, so there was a national search going on for Krista Ray, and I, um, you know, I wanted to have the opportunity to. I had a, a couple of offers from different districts to be superintendent, and but I really wanted to get back to the faith formation, and I really wanted to get back to my roots. And I saw the posting. I had a couple friends call me and say, "Hey." There's this position open with Crystal Ray. I know that you already have a couple contract offers from different districts, but I really think that you should um, should look into it. 
I did, and it spoke to me, the mission, the crystal ray, the way that um, you take kids from underprivileged um, backgrounds and you uplift them and you elevate them. And, you know, the crystal ray has the wonderful component of the corporate study program. And I it, it just intrigued me. I had to find out what it was about. I applied. It was a national wide search, as I said. There were 60 applicants. Um, they interviewed every single one of them the first round, and it was a uh, Zoom interview. I don't think I do well on Zoom. I love talking to people face to face. I like looking you in the eye and just being part of the experience, right? So I thought, well, I'm going to try and see what happens. And I get an email that says, you made it through the first Zoom. Here's the second one. And then I got an email that said, you made it to the second one. Here's the third Zoom. It was probably the hardest interview process I've ever had in my wow. life. Um, and then finally, I get an email that says, you are one of three finalists. And uh, we were all in the building, all three candidates, from 8 in the morning to 4 in the morning. That's how long the interview was. And at the end, you know, that they asked us to uh, present to a revolving room door of uh, teachers and staff that were coming in in the morning. At lunch, we met with the Sisters of Charity at Leavenworth, which mm-hmm. are the sponsors of the, the Crystal of the Ray. Yeah. Uh, and I immediately fell in love with them. It, it just felt like everything was just a perfect match. And then in the afternoon, uh, we have a very hefty 25-member board. And I spent wow. the afternoon with them um, just answering questions. They gave me some data to kind of break it down for them, and I was able to do that. At the end of the interview, I had no idea how I had done. So I was <laughs> probably worn, you're ready to go back to Brazil <laughs> oh, for fiesta. Right. For, for siesta. Need, you're right. Yeah, I needed right. a vacation after that. It was it was it was intense. <laughs> I remember grabbing the wrong water bottle, you know, grabbing somebody else's water bottle on my way out. And then I get the phone call that says you've been chosen as the wow. next uh, president of Crystal Ray, Kansas City. And it was an honor and you know, an honor that comes with a lot of responsibility. And I don't take that very lightly at all because I know that it's um, a mission that is dear to the sisters, uh, dear to a lot of our benefactors, and dear to me. And I know that I'm paving the way for for future leaders. So I want to make sure that there are no barriers on their way when they come. Yeah, and you saw how important it was to them as yes, well. Yes. And I think finding someone in their own backyard really helped. I think that probably helped your process. I'm not sure where the other two finalists were from, yes. but you being from Blue Springs and knowing yes. Kansas City and being yes. here and then your background, I think is just, I mean, well, it, was, it was a slam dunk. I think I'd so. Hard I think so. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> thank hard you. Hard <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I don't want to move yeah. anybody from somewhere. Like, she's right down the street here. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I just think that's incredible. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about Cristo Ray. 1986, I think? So 2006, when it was Open Doors. Open yeah. Doors, yes. right. Yes, But the idea came back in 1986. That's I right. Think, that's right. With Father Foley. Idea. That's yes, right. Father because, Foley. you know, he um, saw the need for communities that were underserved to, to be able to provide that faith formation, that Catholic education right. that there was not available. And... He started with a dream, and here we are today. You know, uh, for us, it's 20 years later, and um, we have a huge pipeline, some amazing supporters. When it comes to talking about Kansas City, that that is one of the things that I find so magical. It's the way that the philanthropic community is. It is just, like I said, I, I, I believe I mentioned this to you, it's inspiring to know that they believe so much in this dream, and it is a connection not only for to provide that faith formation, the Catholic education, to provide um, a pipeline of connection between corporate partners and um, in this great city to to be able to give back and also receive. And it is just something that I, I'm in love with and I find it phenomenal the way that it works. Right. And I think the educational system is fantastic with Crystal Ray, the, the fact that there are small classes. Yes. Okay. I think there's how many kids are. You know, Christo the ratio Ray? is uh, right now we are 263. Okay. We are hoping to get to 350, and that will be our cap. Um, and but just to be able to provide the the more the differentiating instruction in the classrooms to be able to provide teachers that are really uh, focused on the growth of the whole child and making right. sure that we are you know not only taking care of their their spiritual side but their their mental and also their educational side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which is just, yeah, it's phenomenal. I think the other thing about it is you said they're, they're kids from tough economic backgrounds. Um, and the corporate partner thing is amazing because all these kids, basically they go in and they work, they do, right? They go out and they do apprenticeships. They go in low level at different companies where they 
may think they probably might have a career or a future. I'd like to be an engineer. I'd like to be this or I'd like to be that. And you try to get them into those companies, which philanthropically, they are just, they're saying, yes, absolutely. Come on in here and we'll show you exactly what to do. And that helps defray the cost of their education at Correct. a private high school. Correct. Correct. So yeah. our corporate study, so our financial model, the way the crystal works, our financial model is a third of that, the cost comes from the corporate work study program. So, you know, our kids are there, they have skin in the game and our parents pay a very minimal amount. Uh, if our parents pay $400 a year, that is too much. And if they can't afford to pay that, we figure out a way to find scholarships for that. But a third of it is raised through our corporate study program, and the rest is through benefactors, through our events, through our donors, through our corporations with in grants. And, and so that's how we survive. And um, we are doing, you know, we are constantly looking for new partners, constantly sure. looking for new donors and scholarship providers, but that is how, that is how we survive. There, that is how we are able to provide this amazing educational experience for us. And so then how do you vet the kids who, who are coming out of a grade school and now they want to go to Cristo Ray? I'm sure there's a vetting system of some kind. There's a, that's a great question. So we have students coming into us as freshmen from 43 different middle schools throughout the case uh, on the Missouri side and the Kansas side. We do not turn them away. Um, we do have a rigorous uh, interview process and admissions process. They have to, you know, our kids, if you walk into that building, I want, I can't wait for you to come by sometime. But when you walk into the building, you see kids who want to be that, that game changer in their families. They want to be that, the ones that break that poverty cycle. And so they come in, they have to have good grades. They have to have a good um, discipline record. Um, we are not a second chance high school I, I do believe that there needs to be a second chance high yes, school. Yes, there needs to be. However, we, Crystal Ray, due to our financial model, we cannot do that. Um, and we are very selective. We interview our students and want to make sure that they want to be there. But we also interview the parents. And they all sign a commitment contract to come to Crystal Ray because we want to make sure that they know that this is, it takes all of us. We are a team. And they have to play a part in this just as we do. And so, yeah. Yeah, That's right. In fact, I think you use the... Uh, they call it the Meyer effect. You know, we rise by lifting others. We rise correct? by lifting yeah. others. Well, thank you for saying that. Yeah. Yes, that's what they say. You know, I just, I, I'm just along for the rise. Yeah, I, no, I, just, I think you're <laughs> a little bit more than along for the ride. Oh. So it, 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 and then I'm sure there's kids that come and go. I mean, there's kids that start out there and go, you know, I really did not want to do this, or this just isn't for me, or it may become too rigorous for them uh, academically as yes. well. You know, to be able to handle the yes, uh, the full. We try to put supports in place, especially during the freshman year for the. Uh, you know, this is my third year, Chris Ray, starting my third year. For the past two years, we have not seen a huge decline on kids who want to leave. Right. Once they're there for the past two years, we've seen kids just want to stay. But that's also because we are improving our programs. We want to make sure that, you know, we are competing sometimes with uh, charter schools who have beautiful facilities. You know, we don't mm -hmm. have those facilities. Or other Catholic high other schools Catholic, in the area. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, they have, you know, I think it's those extracurricular activities. We don't have the outdoor facilities. We're working on it. So hopefully we'll get to a place someday that, you know, we'll be blessed enough to be able to offer these things. But we want to really focus right now on academics, the opportunities for, for school, these, the the wraparound supports that we are able to provide. You mean the provide. important things? <laughs> that we're able it's to not provide. Friday night lights. It isn't, it is isn't not, the big it deal. It is not. You know, we, our, our community is really focused. Uh, you know, for, for those um, sports, uh, they, they really want soccer. They're really huge yeah. soccer fans. And so, you know, we, we are able to right now partner with different organizations that we can use their soccer field. And so just finding different, um, thinking out of the box on, on ways to collaborate with with partners that, that can offer those things. But yeah, it's one of those challenges that we face, but we find that our kids come because they're looking for that faith formation. They're looking yeah. for that Catholic education. They're looking for more of a, uh, not being a number and being a name and, and being somebody yeah, right. that, that, it, that has a special part in that school. How about transportation? Is it the parents do they uh, have to get them there, or do you? You don't. We you offer, have your own buses. We offer transportation. Oh yes, we offer 43 transportation. Mills. No. You must. Well, how far do you travel to pick so, up so, some of the kids? You know, uh, for for <clears throat> we, we travel everywhere. We're all over the place. Not only we provide transportation for the kids home to school, but we also provide transportation from school to their jobs, their corporate jobs. Yes, because right. so you know, it's what makes us unique. Also makes us very complex. And so logistically speaking, it's it's a lot to to. Um, 
to manage and to juggle, but we have a phenomenal team. I am very blessed with a phenomenal team that of people that have their roles to play and they do a, such a great job with it. So I am very blessed with that. And then we also have the Sisters of Charity Leavenworth. They're just <laughs> phenomenal supporters and, and just not only as sponsors, but they are also, you know, along with our donors and our uh, philanthropic community, they're engaged. You know, they come in, they want to know what's going on. They're not just... Um, writing a check. Right. They, they want to know where their they, money is going and what it's doing. They want to know. Yeah. But they also want to engage with the students, which that's the part that I really love. They want to, you know, it's an authentic relationship that I can recognize right away when somebody's being genuine about something. And I feel really good about everyone that's on board with us right now. Yes, yeah, it's great because it's, it's the circle of life as it well. Is. Because these kids are going to graduate. Basically, they're going to have pretty good jobs. And then they're going to go on and then they're going to turn around and they're going to help Crystal Ray as that's, well. That's as the, that's is, the dream. Know? That's the vision yeah. that, that, you know, um, one, that our students' kids will never need to come to Crystal Ray. But they will be part of our of our, of our our journey. Yeah, we'll right. forward to supporting the kids. Yeah, right. And talk a little bit about what you got, the H8, found, the H8 Foundation, right? The, uh, the, the nonprofit Um the Health Forward Foundation. You have you have a lot of things happening at Crystal Ray. Talk a little bit about some of those things. You got Casey Bizfest that you're a mentor in. I mean, there's a lot of things swirling around you as the leader of that high school. Yes, yes, absolutely. And and those are just a few of the um of the partnerships that we have. And I I truly believe that it just uh being participating in that, being a mentor, being a leader, being a part of experiencing those things, it just Brings more, shines more of a light on Crystal Ray, and it helps to with recruitment. It helps with um, partnerships as, as sharing facilities, and and so I, I am a person who always wants to give back, and so being part of those you know committees and boards and foundations, it, it just helps me to be more grounded and know how to better. Um, find support from my own board right. when I'm serving on other boards. You realize you're already giving back by being the leader of this high school, right? I mean, that, that is also you, a part of it Thank here. You. Can you give us a couple of examples of some of your success stories? Some kids who've gone out and now they're moving to, and I know you haven't been there forever, no. uh, just since 2006. I mean, that's only 18 years, yes. which is uh, phenomenal. But uh, yeah, just talk a little bit about some of the, yeah. some of the kids going out and maybe you know, getting scholarships and, you know, moving on with their education. Absolutely. Uh, and that is one of my favorite things to talk about. Yeah. So, you know, my first year uh, into 2022, coming into Crystal Ray as a first year president, I wanted to to build my schema and just kind of get to know what is it like for a student of Crystal Ray. I wanted, so I set up several interviews with seniors and um, loved every single one of them. The stories that I heard were just so touching, but there was one that really sticks out to me and, um, it is a young lady named Kelly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not say her last name, but her name is Kelly. And she was a senior. She was going out when I'm coming in. And I asked her, I said, tell me what it's like for you to be a student at Crystal Ray. And she said, um, you know, Miss Meyer, the first day that I went to school, that I went to my job, she said, what I love most about Crystal Ray is my corporate work study experience. And I said, okay, tell me more about that. And she said, the first day that I went to my job, I went to the bathroom. And I cried for 30 minutes. And I said, you know, I'm saying, okay, well, tell me a little bit more about that. And, and through the conversation, I come to find that Kelly had never left her neighborhood. You know, so she, uh, Chris Array provides this opportunities of jobs for students that they would not otherwise have. You know, right. they, and so she's telling me this and she goes, um, I went to, to the bathroom and I cried because I had never seen a, a place so beautiful. I, the building just overwhelmed her, her. Yeah. you know it overwhelmed her mm -hmm. and now but but really what the kick of it for me that just kind of gave me goosebumps through this conversation was what she shared she said um but now when i go to work my colleagues they need me and when they go to court they say kelly do you have my copies kelly have you done this kelly have you done that and all of a sudden to me as she's talking is i'm seeing her changed. Mm -hmm. She's no longer seeing herself different. She's no longer, she's seeing herself, she's seeing herself with a seat at the table. And that was provided by the people who she called colleagues, but they're not really colleagues, but I didn't have the heart to tell her that, you know? Yeah, right. And the way that she was talking, she felt empowered. She felt complete. And she said, uh, Kelly was accepted in, in, into the six-year uh, law program at UMKC. 
She's now in her sophomore year, starting her junior year now. And um, I called her her freshman year. I wanted to check in on her and see how she was doing. And she said, I'm fine. And I said, okay, great. This is the beginning of the semester. Then I called her again in the spring. And she tells me this. She goes, Miss Meyer, you don't need to keep calling me. She said, my friends at Postonelli call and check on me all the time. And I go to lunch with them and they take care of me. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, this young lady, because of Krista Ray, was mm -hmm. put in a position where she worked at Postonelli for four years. She's going to law school now. And without even notifying us, they're still providing her support. They're still providing her guidance. When she well, they want her back. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I hope so. But whether or not she's going to graduate college, she's going to graduate law school, and she's going to be to have more contacts than both of my boys when they graduated law school. You know, sure, and so I find this to be so moving and so inspiring because that's what Krista Ray does for our kids. That's what our comp the corporate work study component does. It it puts our students, these young men and young women, in positions where they would not otherwise have those opportunities that they would not be there. Yeah, right. Yeah. Their vision would always be shaded by where I came from, and I, I don't really see a way out. Exactly. And then all of a sudden, they go in as freshmen and start doing a work-study program. Yeah. And just like she said, she walked in the building and went, oh, my God, yes, yes. this is out here? I walked in there, and I'm like, wow, this is phenomenal. You know, so, yeah, yes. <laughs> well, it is a pretty so, impressive building. So, yes, Okay, yes. yeah. So. But, but those opportunities are everywhere, you know, with, with big companies like J. Don, with um, Americo, with um, – you know, I, I can sit here and name Blue Cross and Blue Shield, the Royals organization. I can sit here and name all these companies, but I can also name you the smaller companies. You know, uh, it is just so enlightening to see how Kansas City just embraces this mission and right. runs forth with it. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. Now, do you have a lot of college recruiters coming in to, to try to pick off your seniors to go to our school and for scholarships? We do. We do, yeah. absolutely. So, you know, we have a huge... Um, a huge component of the Crystal Ray model is to make sure that the kids are, they have the opportunity to attend college, right? So when they graduate our school, they have to have been accepted to five different universities. Oh, my God. That is one of their goals. That is the goal that has been met for the past three years since I've been there. They have to have been accepted to five schools. So, you know, and then what we try to instill in them is like you have five doors open for you. You can you have the choice of going to door number one, and you have the choice of saying, I want to walk out of this one, and I want to go to door number three. So those opportunities are there for you. So putting in front of them options that um, that they otherwise not have, it's phenomenal. Yeah. So, And we also, as part of the Crystal Ray model, we also have our alumni department. And it is one person dedicated to making sure that they're checking in on our kids when they do go to colleges and universities. And check in with them because it's, it's hard enough being – away from your family your first year, mm -hmm. but it's also hard enough if nobody in your family has ever gone to college. Right. If there is nobody that you can call and say, how was this experience for you? Or, you know, it, what do I do? The, the first generation <laughs> kids. It, 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 so just, I am so proud of, of being able to, to continue this great work of providing our alumni with, yeah. with, with that great, great support. So not only the kids, but the parents know as well. By the time they get seniors, they have to be accepted in five schools. So, yes. you know, we're, we're, we don't, you know, we don't mess around here. Okay. No, we, we don't are, mess around. This is all about yes. education and, and it really comes through. That's phenomenal. So what is the vision from this point on for Christo Ray? It, it's to continue to grow um, our corporate work study program to, to be able to bring in more partners, to bring more people in there to see, you know, once you step foot in that building, and you see the magic in the hallways, mm -hmm. you can't turn around and say, I'm not going to be part of this anymore. And that happens so much. So I invite everybody to just come in and be part of this great mission and come yeah. in and, 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 you know, try and get in touch with us. There's several different ways. Our website, uh, we would love to host you for a meet and greet. There's opportunities to, to be a mentor, to be a volunteer, to sit down with the kids and just, you know, tutor them in math or science or, you know, just be there to be a, a friend and yeah, right. they all need that. And so we are looking for all kinds of different partnerships and that's the vision, the mission that we want to go to. It's to expand our um, corporate partnerships, to expand our donor list, to make sure that we have volunteers in hand that can be part of this great journey with us. You realize it probably already happened, but you realize you are going to be on a lot of people's list of let's get her. We're going to move her. We're going to take her somewhere else. I mean, would that be an allure to you, or are you really just solidified where you are at, at, at Christo Ray? I, I can 
say it with 100% certainty that Crystal Ray is where I want to be. Uh, this mission is really important to me mm -hmm. and to see, you know, as, as a 15-year-old coming to this country, I wish I had had a Crystal Ray. Mm -hmm. I, I truly believe that it would have opened so many more other doors for me. Mm -hmm. And so I want to see that come true for others. Yeah, and with the way you walked through that, the, the way you did it was... You know, it, it worked out perfectly. Talk a little bit about the family. Yes, Talk a little bit yes. about your husband and the two boys. I, I hear what, both are in law school? Both are engineers? or both No, are, so, both yeah, are, so that trajectory from Rolla, you know, but, uh, when we moved right. here, uh, we had our first son in, in college. Uh, <laughs> not that we needed another yeah, thing right. to just, but, you know, it was something that we are very, our, our Let's kids, call that juggling it thing is that you juggling. do so it, well. It is juggling, <laughs> and it's, you know, and if, if it takes partnership, right? Mm -hmm. I have an incredible husband who... Uh, champions my causes as a, as a leader, but also champions um, family. And we are able to just share those responsibilities and, and, and do, you know, I count on, I, on him for everything. He it really is an inspiration to me. He has his own story of how he grew up. Uh, you know, he's from St. Louis and his mom died when he was eight. He was never knew his parents. Oh. He's got a beautiful story. And I remember going, when we were dating, he said to me, I want to be the father that I never had. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking, because family is just. And and I think that the, was the attraction too. That, that he was, saw your family yes, and then know where you're from. Absolutely. And how big the family absolutely, is, how important absolutely. it is. Yes. As a matter of fact, I think my parents like him more than they do me now. But, <laughs> but you know, it's one of those things. 33 years later, married, this is what I have to deal with. Um, but no, we have, you know, Tony's an educator in Blue Springs, still with the same school since wow. day one. He's got all the degrees that I have except for doctor, but he is got his administration Oh, we're in a degrees. competition now with Tony? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, yeah. It's always a competition, isn't it? Uh, so he, but he always told me, he goes, I just want to teach. I feel like I am making the most impact when mm -hmm. I'm teaching. And, you know, he is getting ready to retire after this year. So hopefully I'll be able to steal him and bring him to Crystal Ray. Because yes, uh, I know right. there's uh, several other organizations trying to steal him too. But um, we have two boys and uh, we have Sean. He is 31. And he um, graduated from Blue Spring South, went and played basketball at K-State and got his degree from K-State undergrad. Yeah. He was uh, recruited by Frank Martin. Okay. And uh, graduating from K-State, he took a gap year to do some service work around Kansas City. He just wanted to give back. Then went to law school in Chicago, graduated law school, and now he's back in KC and brought a uh, fellow law school Student. Student with him, yeah. which happens to be his fiance now. And they have opened their own firm. They have, um, you know, uh, Sean and, and Shamama have uh, started, it's called Ticket Takedown. And it's an app that grew very fast. And so they, most of their efforts are in focusing on how to improve the service of the app. And it is, if you receive a, tic a ticket, uh, you will get a text from Ticket Takedown. They'll say, we'll be able to handle your ticket right here right now wow. and it saves all the headache and they're doing really well with that and, oh, that and they're just growing idea. so yeah oh and i'm sure you, you really you really want those red light uh, cameras to go up now huh? oh, uh, they probably want those red light cameras. you know what <laughs> uh, i i don't know anything i just i just wish that the best for them but ticket takedown was doing really well and then our youngest one is um went to wash for undergrad in yeah. st louis and then Came back to Kansas City, did one year of service, just like his brother did. I went back to WashU because he got a full ride scholarship to law school. And graduated law school, has been working with Sandberg Phoenix for the past two years. And is in Kansas City. Both of my kids wanted to come back to Kansas City. And I am just very, very thrilled that this is where they want to put down their roots. Yeah, and, right. and where they grew up in the city that they know so well, that has loved them, that has... Uh, has provided so many opportunities to our entire family. Yeah, right. Well, I think the leadership of you and your husband and then all of your family and, and everything else has really helped us. So that is, that's all part of it. That's why we do this yeah. because there is just something about There's Kansas something City. There's something about right? Kansas City, yeah, yes, yeah, there yes, really yes. is. And there's just something about you, Claudia. Huh. Claudia Meyer, the first female Latina president at Cristo Rey, just doing phenomenal work. And we just love having you here. Please don't leave. And, um, it's just you are building your own legacy. Your Thank family you. is too. So Thank I think you. that's incredible. Thank so. you. You know, my family and a, a wonderful team. I'm gonna. I have to shout out the team because they are, they are incredible. And that you know, if, if it wasn't for them, I don't know if I could be successful like this. So yeah, yes. Yeah, so so just shout out to my team. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think you would have made it somehow, some way in the background. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Claudia. Absolutely, it's a yeah, pleasure. Right. Thank you for having me and for allowing me to share some of this wonderful 
yeah, journey you and, 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 you know, I'm excited to hear more of everybody else that comes in and share about yeah. our wonderful town. Well, you just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, Frank. And uh, Thank you. it'll definitely be shared. Thanks Appreciate so much for joining Thank us. You. Appreciate it. Folks, that's why there's just something about Kansas City. There's Just Something About Kansas City is a registered 501c3 nonprofit organization with the mission of documenting the stories that have built our city to inspire and educate generations to come. Our work is made possible by the generous support of local partners such as the Cockrell Family Foundation and the Sherman Family Foundation. For more information about how you can help us share these stories, visit our website at somethingaboutkc.org. Thank you.